What's up guys, Coach Alex here with Physique Development and today I am going to teach on the movement we love to hate but know we need to do the split squat. And not only just the split squat, the split squat with a glute emphasis. We're trying to get that dump truck and I have all the answers for you today. We develop physiques, we train, we educate and we empower. As we get into the split squat and trying to bias the glutes, there's going to be a couple of things that we have to ensure are in place to make sure that we have the bias towards those glutes. The first thing is going to be the height of how we are elevating that back foot. The second thing is going to be the stride length that we're taking. And the third is going to be how we're initiating the movement. All three of those are going to dictate, are we going to have a greater quad bias or are we going to have a greater glute bias? And with today's emphasis, we're gonna have a glute bias. And the first thing that I would like to get started with is going to be the back foot elevated height. This being the boxes or it being a bench, we want to ensure that we're only raising the foot as high as we need in terms of allowing for our knee to travel. So it, this box is already set up for me personally. If I'm setting up in the split squat, all I need is to be able to clear the floor with my knee and not run into the floor and limit my range of motion. The other aspect is that I only wanna raise it so high so that my pelvic positioning stays neutral and I don't have a, a hiking to one side because my back foot is too high. If I pull up a bench here, I may find myself in that position where the bench is too tall and I'm in a position where my hip is now sitting higher and now I'm unbalanced and I'm not allowing the glute to function in the best position possible. So you wanna be very cognizant of where you're placing that back foot. The second thing with that back foot elevation, and this is a very small nuanced detail that could be beneficial, or you may be like, bruh, this doesn't matter, get this out of my life, and that's okay, but I do wanna bring it to your attention, is that when we are planting that back foot, we want to have on the ball of our foot to allow for the rec fem, which is part of our quad, to stabilize the pelvis to our best ability. This gives us a little bit of a greater traction or a ability to have stability through this. You may find yourself where you're, you're pointing your foot down on this box, not so comfortable. On this bench, a little bit easier to do. Still not overly comfortable, but you don't have that same stability through this quad with the back leg. So just be cognizant of that as you're navigating through the exercise. Now that we have an understanding of where that back foot needs to be, let's go ahead and dig into the stride length that is going to be best for you to target those glutes in the split squat. When it comes to stride length, the common thought is that a longer stride is going to be a greater glute bias. And that's not just a one size fits all approach. It's more so going to be about, can we bias the amount of hip hinging relative to the amount of knee flexion that we're attaining? And if we can push the hips back further while deprioritizing our knee flexion, we're gonna have a greater bias on those glutes to take a greater degree of the tension in that movement. When I'm assessing my stride length, I do want the stride to be longer, but I do not want it to be so long that it is limiting my range of motion. If I do stride too long, what's going to happen is that I'm not going to be able to bend at the knee as much, nor am I going to be able to hip hinge, and that's going to be my whole intent with the movement. What I am looking for within my stride length is maximizing the degree of hip hinging or ability to push my hips back and being able to deprioritize the amount of knee flexion that I'm achieving. And that brings us to initiation. This is going to be a very, very, very important piece of this exercise because if we do not allow for ourselves to initiate by driving the hips back, this is not going to allow for us to have the greatest bias on the glutes themselves. And so when we're getting into the exercise, it's going to be extremely important that we have that stride length that we talked about and where that foot positioning is needing to be. And if we initiate by driving the hips back and allowing for our upper body to fall forward while we deprioritize the amount of knee flexion that we're achieving, we're gonna have a greater bias towards this glute and allow for us to have the greatest glute tension. So now I wanna take you guys through some working repetitions of this exercise so you can see it in real time. And there you have it, the exercise we love to hate but know we need to perform. You can bias the quads in this exercise and we have a video on that right here. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, you need to do that right now. See you later.